But today in the shop, we started our GS custom wheel project, and we got the wheel off on the previous video the day before, and we started the intense cleanup, cleanup, steam cleaning, degreasing, and prepping it up without removing the tire. And I gave a lot of tips that I thought would help if you're trying to degrease or clean up an old part for painting. I think there's some really useful information, even if you're not doing a wheel. It's good information. Now this morning I came out, the Ducati fairing has been drying overnight. What I'm going to do is take this inside, put it up by a heating vent until Joe's able to get here with the paint. It looks perfect. The next step on this we're going to be is to, to do the sand, actually I don't even think it needs to be sanded. I'll just hit it with some 400. Not, there's not even a lot of dust in it. But the Dupla Color Primer really does a nice job. It really does. I, I don't even think I'm going to sand this again. I think it's ready for... The first coat of red but anyway we gotta wait till joe gets the paint here this really came out nice and we'll get it in by a heating vent uh, not even necessary just just so it's warmer when you touch it now it's always really enjoyable to me when i come out here flip the battery chargers and i always rub my hand on these pan buffed wheels and i think wow the, the all the effort you put into a set of wheels when you're all done and springtime gets here and you, you take that first ride up to see your friends and or enemies, whatever, <laughs> you never know. And I think that's worth every penny and every bit of effort we're going to put into these GS wheels. And I, I hope you'll be following along with the, the several episodes it takes. But it isn't easy. It's labor intensive. It's a lot of work. But when you're done, you really have something. Now, as I think about it, one of the things, of course, somewhere in the future, and you never know what that future is going to hold, we may do a set of wheels for this guy. Actually, John Pothier and I have both taken computer-generated pictures of the bike and seen what it would look like with gold wheels, with silver, with black, with an accent stripe. And what I'm trying to do with the, with the GS wheels, John has already made a photo that I can show of what the bike would look like with black wheels without the accent stripe and he's working on a photo right now with the accent stripe so when they're done we'll share those boy love that carbon fiber fender that was a nice upgrade nice little tasty upgrades so the way today is hopefully going to play out it's really brutally cold out here glad i'm going to get all my parts and all my work down into the cellar where it's a lot warmer and the coffee tastes a lot better and we hope soon that uh, the weather's going to get better. But you know what, guys? I'm not really holding my breath here. I think it's going to be a long winter. Now, I know I mentioned this before, but I know these lithium-ion batteries, I plugged them in, and it, I mean, it's 20 degrees out here right now. And in a matter of two minutes, they're topped off, and the light is green. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, we're, all, we're already, as I say it, we're already flashing, and... I usually about two minutes later we're in solid green and one of the things I know happens to a lot of people in the winter they just lose interest in motorcycling and then springtime comes oh why didn't I do that oh why didn't I put the tire or why didn't I get a new battery or whatever they wait till spring and then you lose a couple of riding days and then oh, I don't know I like to do as much of the maintenance in this crazy cold weather as I can and any upgrades or any in this case painting wheels I like to get it done when the weather is just like it is right now. And that will get us motivated to get some work done today. So after a good cup of coffee, that gets me motivated. Looking at the project table and what I did at the end of yesterday, I brought in all the, tool, the tire changing equipment, all the things we need to work on that wheel today, and my box for tire changing stuff. So we're pretty much set up for a day, and I'm just waiting for Karen to tell me now. The, we always have errands we have to do, and we have uh, my grandson coming today, so I need her to tell me how much of a time window we have, and then I can prepare what I'm going to do. And it's always, it's always something different, because we hate Groundhog Days. Now the first thing today, I see we got a... Uh, I'll tell you, these people come 8 o'clock in the morning. The Amazon guys are already out at the porch. And this is something that Turbo Steve was very helpful with getting this. And sent me the link. And it looks like we got, uh, well, we'll take this apart and see. This is a real 
a real genuine, <coughs> if there is such a thing, GoPro Wind Slayer, which, uh, well, let's go see how it works. That, now, the thing I was concerned about, I, no, I'm not concerned, but Steve had thought the one I have, because it's a Chinese ripoff, it may be not the, the same quality, which we know for sure that could be the case. But we're not going to have weather in the next couple of days to test it, but that's for sure a possibility. And, oh, see, when you get stuff made in America, you get directions. <laughs> I want to give you a, a carrying case to carry your GoPros with. I don't know. Product information. We'll read that, of course. See what that says. And we've got a carrying case. I don't know what we're going to do with that. And But this is the thing we're looking forward to testing. And honestly, you know, I'm going to have to... They look exactly the same, but, but looking the same. <laughs> Just go buy that fake Windex that's half the price and clean your car windows and see what... Looking the same is not the same. So anyway, we will test this as soon as possible. And now we do have a real GoPro, uh, what do you call? So all we need is some weather. Now being honest, you really can. I looked at this with a jeweler's loop. And you can see that I can feel that the material feels a little different. Although, to be honest, it looks exactly the same. But looks can be deceiving. And you can see this one. I'm just going to make a, a, a comparison. The, this is the real GoPro one. You notice the hole is in the middle. You notice the one on the, the uh, that were two for five dollars or whatever they were. This, this one is not the same. It, it is, and, and if you look, it's a little bit different color. These are a little lighter. I'm going to take these. It won't be a problem and just put them away so I don't, I don't confuse them because from this part in our testing on, we're going to use the real ones. I'm just going to try to focus in on that material. And I say real ones. I don't even know if that's the right word. I don't know if you can do it side by side. Now, if you look side by side, this looks like there's more holes per, uh, well, I don't know how to, how to evaluate it. But, but again, we're going to try. These are now obsolete. And as soon as we do get a riding day, especially if we get a riding day on the GS, that was the, and the, the, uh, the MT, they were terrible. The naked bikes were really terrible. And this is looking at them with a, a really powerful jeweler's loop. It really is, I, boy, I wish I could tell. And I, from looking at it really close where you can see, I mean, this is really magnified. The real GoPro one looks like a much more dense material. This looks like, well, again, I'm not an expert on this. And you know what? When you're an expert, it's a good idea not to pretend to be. And, and let people like Steve that have done the test and had good results. So, Steve, thank you again. We will get, as soon as we can, we will test the real ones next. So is everything. Um, maybe even these are made in China. Who knows? <laughs> I'm reading the directions. This, this is the kind of thing I always think is funny. <laughs> this, this GoPro Wind Slayer, which is a real GoPro Wind Slayer, may cause your camera to overheat and shut down. Well, the rides I've been on lately, nothing's going to shut down. The coffee maker is the only thing that's going to shut down. But anyway, I understand if it's really, really hot, you're confining some of the heat in there. That camera does get hot. Okay, so, but anyway, we do have with the... Uh, an interesting test coming up the next rideable day. Now I remember the first time I ever painted a wheel and, and of course this was a, a, <clears throat> a long time ago and I thought wow you know it won't be a big problem what I'll do is I'll just take masking tape and I'll mask off the disc and I'll do this and I'll do that and when I was all done it, it looked okay you know from if you stood on top of the Empire State Building it looked okay and then I thought you know what? I, I can't live with that. And I know Scott just finished a, a pair of wheels. He sent me pictures. He even painted these little tabs. Well, we're going to take and get all brand new stainless steel hardware for this job. So these bolts I'll just put in inventory. But right after that first wheel and, and seeing that the quality was not what I wanted, I decided I'd do it over. And you know, from that point on, I said, you know when you do a wheel... And this is really a good tip. It takes time. It, it's a long journey, but it's all little steps. Now, I'm going to try to show every step that I've used. And 
the first obviously the first step on any of this is we got to get the disc off we're going to rejuvenate the disc or use the other one we'll re we'll re-grease the bearings these feel real nice by the way we'll get rid of the weight of course and one by one there's steps and it's a long it's a long journey but the good news is if you do it step by step and and obviously there's a lot of ways to do this I certainly don't have the only way, but I know the way that I have. It's a little labor intensive, a little time consuming. Boy, when you're done, I I think the product is well worth the work. Oh, anytime these old school bolts, and they have this little retainer so you, the bolts don't loosen. I think in the old days, and I'm not sure. Of course, uh, the the Japanese engineers know a whole lot more than I do, but. They use these to avoid lock tightening the bolts because if you strip the bolt, I back in the day I guess a lot of people had heavy hands, and the problem was like like on an RD those Phillips screws. The idea of Phillips screws was you couldn't over tighten them. Well, <laughs> I'm not so sure, but I do know when I was doing the R1 wheels and the FZR wheels to get out the uh, the Yamaha bolts that came with red Loctite was an absolute nightmare. And you'd usually, you'd usually booger them up or, or half strip them or whatever. Then I went down to Motorcycle Mall to get a couple of authentic Yamaha bolts. And I found out a very, a very nice thing. He says, an awful lot of people come in and buy replacement bolts. So it means they really, that's the, the technology of today is they red Loctite them in. Now this is nice because if we were going to use these over, and it was very cute what Scott did. I thought it was cute. He painted these little tangs to match the bike. Now I'm not going to. Re we're not going to use these over again. We're not even going to use these bolts over again. But if you just accept the fact right in the beginning, it's going to be a long job, and it's a lot of steps, and just do it right. You're way ahead of the game at the end. Don't tap on the part of the disc that the rotor rides on. We're doing it from the inside. In fact, I hope this is not really frozen any worse than it. No, it's not. But I'd rather be delicate. I look for what side is coming off. But some of these on these old bikes really get frozen on. There we go. No damage. But, but never hit the disc. That's, I'll never take a pair of pliers. I found that out the hard way too. Okay, so these discs are pretty much, this is ready for rejuvenation. The wheel came apart. This side, the bearing's fine. I just look to see if any of these bearings are frozen. This bike's been in storage for many years. Now, it's real important to keep this in mind. I, I have found this to be really important. When you're cleaning a wheel and you're using chemicals and brake cleaner and, and simple green and whatever. You, I don't want any of it getting down into the bearings. So I usually use Gorilla Tape, try to keep it from, from making a mess. But I guess any way you can keep it out. Now I've also, in the past, what I've done is put tissues in here and rags and I think this will be the best way. I want to keep, while we're working on this and grinding and sanding, I don't want anything going down into that bearing. And that is a critical step of the job. If you're doing all this work and all that stuff's going down into your bearing, even though these are sealed bearings, it's not doing you a favor. Now, I wanted to congratulate our friend Thomas Luciano. He did his 750 turbo wheels, and I saw the final result. And boy, they look pretty cool. I am impressed. Now, and because he's a modeler, I'm sure he has a lot of these skills down pat. But anyway, this is... Now I've got to do the same thing on the other side. I, what I'm trying to protect is that we don't have any of the slurry or the, the grit or the grease or anything work its way down into the center of the wheel. And even like on the 750 wheels, when, when I went to clean them and I, I steam cleaned them and I, I, when I went inside the wheel, the stuff just poured right out. I didn't want that down by the bearing. So I'm very meticulous now. I try to get, and I'm trying to use, this is the first time I've used Gorilla Tape. I don't know if it's going to be better than the blue tape. Right, so all our back masking is done here and we're ready to start seeing what chemicals we're going to use on this to get some of that oxidation off. So let me just make a thing here that's good information to share. 
if you try to do this whole wheel in one shot, if you have a dip tank, yeah, well, maybe even a dip tank wouldn't work. But these these parts have a coating. It's probably anodizing of some kind, clear anodizing. And so what happens is, as time goes by, this what I call aluminum salt, but that, that's not the right word for it, it gets on everything. And if you don't get this off, guaranteed you're going to paint this whole thing, and a year later, six months later, it's going to be bubble, and it's, the paint's going to come off. So this is the critical step, and this is the time-consuming step. I try to do each segment, then turn the wheel, do another segment. And if I do one in real time, and you'll get the idea, and there are obviously 12 and 24 all together. And I find it easier to do this, a lot easier in fact, with the tire on. In the times that I've taken the tire off, I've made myself extra work because this was harder to handle. Now, in a case of, and I gotta get a, I don't have one here, I gotta get a paintbrush, like a flux brush, because I see this wheel has all kinds of little things, all kind of little areas in here. Now, another thing I used at one time, and it's a it's a high risk thing. I used a product that I bought at Harbor Freight, and it was it was the stuff I used to clean oil off my driveway. And boy, did it do a nice job of cleaning off all this oxidation. The only thing is, it really made a, really made a mess, and the smell was so toxic. So I've, I've kind of taken the fallback thing of just toughen it out with simple green. Now, usually two or three, you can tell. You pretty much can tell when you've got it all off because what's going to happen, the, the rag will come out a little bit cleaner than it normally would. But if you do it in sections, and you can see a lot of it's coming right off. Now, the steam cleaner will get a lot off. I bought four cans of brake cleaner to help. Because where you don't want to have it is in all these little nooks and crannies. And this part of the job, this part that I'm doing right now, is usually very, very time consuming. And it's the part of the job that's going to make the most difference in how this looks when we're done. And this is all corrosion. And it's not what you can see. I call it salt, but it's not really salt. And this is the one I just wiped simple green. And sometimes you have to do it two, three, four times. Now part of this is going to be we're going to sand this down to get it not as smooth as this, but get it so we can get a nice high gloss finish on there. But here's the trick is to get in all these little nooks and crannies because where the paint is going to not want to stick is going to be wherever there's a low valley. And where that low valley is, the paint shrinks a little bit and I don't want to have it pop up there. So I have to get me a whole box of Q-tips because I'm going to be using them up as we go along here. But this part of the job, this is going to be the equivalent of building the foundation on the house. And if you do it over and over and over, Simple Green is very, very good at dissolving grease. I can get in all of the little nooks and crannies. And when you start this, you think, oh my God, this is going to take a whole day. Well, it takes a long time because here's where you got to get the grease out of. And this is where if you don't steam clean it, it's these little nooks and crannies. That you can get, the, you see, in other words, you can get this flat bit clean, but you can't get in all these little nooks and crannies. And that's what makes the job, when that sun goes around and it hits all these soft areas and hard areas, all these angles and edges, it's like looking at a diamond. And that's what makes, when you have a high gloss wheel, and let's be honest, it's why a lot of companies make the wheels flat black. In, including that MT-09. I was disappointed in how flat the wheels were because it's easy to make it. As soon as you make something shiny, you see all the mistakes. But then it gets to be almost maintenance-free. It gets to be like a two seconds to clean. Now you can see what's happening. And I'll just go back over and over. I just bought a new roll of, a new roll, a new case of paper towels. Because I know between Joe's job and this job, we're going to be using up towels. The, the garbage cans are going to get full. But sooner or later, you'll come up on this part of it. And what will happen is you can take a Q-tip and get right in the low spots. And every time you do it, it'll be cleaner than the time before. And if you're just patient enough. Now, it, it is nice if you can do this outside. Unfortunately for us, I'd rather be down here and let it take just a little bit longer. 
But Karen has plans today, and we have things to do, family-related stuff with the baby and the puppy. So I'm going to do as much of this as I can and then come back to it tonight if I get back early enough. But we're going to find out how much I can get done. But then the final bit, amount of this has got to be done with a steam cleaner. You can only get so much this way. But even so, if you, if you just see what I've done is one segment and kind of in real time, just to get an idea of how that's going to play out. So when I get back, we're going to head out right now with family, do our family stuff. But I have one, two, three, four, five, flip it over. So I've got basically a couple hours of work just doing this step. And I won't let the camera run forever, but if I can get each one of these segments as clean as this, it'll be ready for steam cleaning. Now just one final tip, before you ever put any sandpaper, steel wool, anything on that surface, I want that surface to be clean. If I start sanding this or this without clean, a thorough cleaning, I'm going to have a real, real problem. Now, one thing would probably work, and you know, if you, as long as you don't get it too much in by the bearing, this would be cool if we could power wash it, but then you got to be outside and uh, this right now I'm limited to being in the shop with this. The hose is frozen solid anyway. So we're going to just tough this out when we get back. But right now it's time for errands. And what Karen and I always do, we try to plan each day a little bit different. She agrees with me that there should be no groundhog days in her life either. And so far we've been pretty good at doing that, but I got to wait till this guy gets out of the space. Every day is different, a unique entity. And the good news is all our family stuff should be done. And I should still have an hour or two to work on that wheel when I get back. And I do not think there will be any motorcycle riding today. We will go back down and work on those wheels. As I'm pulling in the driveway here, I didn't get it on video, but a big military helicopter just went over the house. Uh, I'm ready to go home and ready to go back to work. Now I'm back down the shop and I'm looking See, this has been sitting all the while I've been away, but look how it it, it picked up all of the, the slobberoo here, all of that. So I've got a brush. Now that it's been sitting probably an hour or so, this should make it make the cleanup just a little bit easier. But an old scrubby brush. And it really is not important how you get it. You just got to loosen all that stuff up and loosen it up enough that the steam floats it away. And boy, you can see, if you paint it over that, there's no way that would stick. You, you would basically just be wasting your time. So here's a couple of really good tips. At the very end of this, and I've pretty much cleaned this as much as I can, but to get that stuff out of the nooks and crannies in the corners, you really need compressed air or a brush or both. A really good idea, using Simple Green, if you can use it outside, of course, it's way better. And I jack my compressor up to as much as it'll go. And from this point on, I want to get all the, mainly the nooks and crannies. And when you do this, I always wear eye protection because triple green, if it gets in your eye, can be a real, it can burn. Also, when you don't have good ventilation here, I purposely this is all the heat you know. But where this, where this works well is to get in the nooks and crannies. Now my, my Harbor Freight steam cleaner, one of the tools I've used so many times. Super handy and in years gone by when I'd ride and it'd be salt on the road, I'd come home and just do the whole bottom of the fairing and the wheels in a matter of five minutes. That was, it paid for itself in one winter. And that is really good when you're prepping up a wheel. Now, no matter how you clean it, getting it clean is really the objective. And you can see we still haven't gotten all of the grit off. Now, if we were to spend all that time going over this and there's grease underneath it, we really jeopardize the chance of having a world-class finish that we want. I want it to be better than that. I want it to be perfect if I can get it that way. And, and I do everything I can to try to make that happen. But the final step on this, once I get as much of this off as I can, the steam cleaner will take even more of it off. 
And it always seems while you're doing this, you say, well, it takes a whole day to do this, a half a day, whatever it is, however fast you are. But in the end, this is the foundation of the house. And if, if our paint doesn't stick, oh God, is it very disappointing and frustrating now. And I don't care, in, in my case, I don't care about how many paper towels I use, how much simple green, or, how, and, or actually how much labor. But I want this before I pull that tire off to be clean. And I've, I've really, in the past, I've really put a lot of time into these custom wheels and I really, I continue to always think, every time I wipe them off, I look for bubbles or chips and, and so far they've been pretty good to be honest. So, well, I think we've got most of it off but the steam cleaner is gonna take the rest. A couple of things about the Harbor Freight steam cleaner. It's about a little less than $100. You don't ever put your hand there, it'd be like putting your hand into a coffee pot, number one. It's got a trigger and a lock, kind of self-explanatory. Until it heats up, it's just gonna spit hot water out. But it has an end. It can, it can work that way. Or you can have this little brush and they give you that with the steam cleaner. And of course, the brush is good for getting down in those little areas. But the main thing when you're using a steam cleaner, you've gotta dry it when you're done. So in other words, I just wanna show this. If I just take steam, I do that part of the wheel. And this is why some people never really figure out how to maximize the use of it. I better get a clean towel. It, and I and I was to go and uh, right now just go have coffee and leave it like that. Well, not really good. The best is to dry it off and then at the very end, take the compressor again and dry it off because I want it to be dry. I don't want any moisture in there. And probably by the time I get done cleaning this, we'll be at the end of this work day. And I want it to be grease free. And you can already see, I've already taken off a lot of the anodizing even. And then I'm gonna do a lot of grinding and sanding on this in the next session, prepping it up for primer. So if I, but the goal was today is to get it clean. And, and that's an all day job and it's well worth it. And you can see how much more residual dirt and grease you remove with the steam. You can just see it. You don't even have to be a, a rocket science to figure this out. But there's always some stubborn spots. And as I'm drying it off by hand, I see a stubborn spot. Something that I didn't like the way it came out. Well, there's an answer. I just spray this with simple green and then go steam clean the other side. And when I get back to this, this will be clean. This will be in a lot cleaner and grease free. Remember, all I'm trying to do here is get rid of all the grease because once I start, and you can see how dirty that still is. I want to have, before I take the tire off, I want to have as much of the grease off as I possibly can. And it's just, this is really a time consuming thing. You don't realize it. But in the course of owning a motorcycle that I've had since it's brand new in 82, and <sighs> My God, it's, it's, this is the minimum I can do to maintain it and keep it because my goal, of course, with all these bikes is to have them until I uh, go to the big bike dealer in the sky or in a garage, whatever. Anyway, that, it is truly a labor of love. Now, this I'm going to spray that once more and then steam clean it once more and then I'll just take the compressed air and dry it all off. And the more times you do this, the cleaner it's going to be. And I want this clean because we are going to put an incredible amount of time into detailing this out and making it a really, really nice addition to our Evil Twin GS project. So I don't really care how long this is going to take. Each time you do it, you notice the water gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And eventually, if I have to, I'll do it enough times that at the end, that water will be almost clear. Then I know I've got the residual oxidation and grease, all the things that are going to contaminate my paint. Because once I start grinding and sanding, and there's going to be a lot of grinding and sanding, I want to make, I want this wheel when it's done. It's a custom wheel to have this finish all the way up to here, that this is all shiny black 
All of these edges are shiny black. Everything here, high gloss black and even in here. And to do that, if I don't start with a perfectly clean wheel, I'm just wasting my time. Before I end the day, any spot that looks like I might have missed a spot, especially in there, a little bit of brake part cleaner. And all of this work that I put in today is gonna pay me big dividends. This is like putting money in a bank. I don't I don't know another a better analogy than that. And I'll just keep with the brake part cleaner until I see clean paper towels coming. Because from this point on. The labor begins, and we really, I am really excited about having this as an accessory for all my evil twin projects, whether it be with the blue body work or with the tan body work. Boy, this is going to allow me to have a really, a really big amount of choices on this. And I think we got most of it, but you never know. And the last thing I'll do is just prep all the prep wall, get it all ready. And that's going to be all I'm going to get done today. And I am really excited about this. Wow. So this was a big job today. You know how long a job is going to take until you do it. This was a long time coming, but I think we have this ready for what's going to be the grinding, which makes this a custom wheel when I get rid of all the casting marks. We'll show that on the next video or so. And But again, at this point in time, I start really get ex getting excited about the project. <laughs> I'm already excited about it. Anyway, this has been a long day, and we, we really did get something accomplished here. I'm amazed. I want to thank the healthcare workers so much now. In the last couple days, I've had doctor visits, and luckily, I'm still healthy. And, and it's doing big part to the healthcare workers, and thank you guys one and all. So I hope you did enjoy the video, and I hope your, your Evil Twin project's coming out great, too. And Scott, keep up the good work. And thanks for watching. So to stay in the shop ended, and I felt really good that we got a lot done. Hopefully tomorrow, Rip will be able to pick up his parts, and we'll make some more room on the on the bench for some more projects. But anyway, we did get the disc removed, and that was that was a little tenacious getting that off, and got most of the parts for this project cleaned. And I tried to show all the methods I've used, but it really doesn't matter what method you use including the steam I try to fast forward through that because that just goes on forever but no matter how you clean it if you can if you can take it to a car wash I guess that's okay too but the idea is at this point in time that wheel is as clean as we can possibly make it before we start grinding because once we start grinding I don't want to grind any of that into the final finish so I hope there's been some good information some good tips and uh, we look forward to sharing whatever we do on this project this is going to become ultimately part of our Evil Twin collection. And thank you so much for watching.